Humanity's imagination has created many mythological figures so far, but perhaps none of them have influenced us as much as dragons. Imagine, even societies that were completely isolated from each other at that time, and therefore had not yet communicated with each other, talked about huge reptile-like creatures that sometimes spewed flames from their mouths in their cultural narratives, completely independently of each other. So why? Why are dragons such an essential part of our shared culture? Or could they have actually existed? Or if they existed, could they actually breathe fire? Let's take a look. First of all, we need to make this clear. Dragons are not real. Although we have unearthed hundreds of dinosaur fossils, footprints, and remains from around the world, there is no evidence that dragons ever existed. It is impossible for there to be no trace left of the bones, bodies, or footprints of such gigantic creatures that can fly and reach all over the world. It is inconceivable that we, who have only existed for the last 300,000 years, lived at the same time and left no traces. Some of the dinosaurs are 150 million years old, and we can even discover the last meal they ate. So we have no evidence that dragons actually exist. But even if dragons don't actually exist, how did they gain such a universal place in our culture? This is where we need to look at how dragons have evolved in cultural narratives over time. Dragons first appear in ancient Mesopotamian cultures, such as the Sumerians and Babylonians. In their culture, the creature called Mushu had claws like an eagle, arms like a lion, a long neck and tail, two horns on its head, a snake-like tongue, and a scaly body that we are familiar with from reptiles. This creature doesn't look like the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of a dragon, does it? Or think of the Vritra in Sanskrit mythology, the famous Leviathan, or the Hydra in Greek mythology. None of these are dragons as we know them. However, over time, as these stories were passed down from culture to culture and generation to generation, the dragon figure evolved as well. While the Tarasque in French mythology is a more familiar figure, the Bala we encounter in Albania resembles a much more familiar dragon figure. First, with the spread of the printing press, books reached every corner of the world. And then, with the Hollywood era, the dragon figure in our minds became increasingly consolidated and began to reflect the angry, greedy, destructive, hateful character of dragons in Europe. However, the dragon images that emerged throughout history were not always of the same character. For example, dragons identified with Chinese culture are not evil and angry creatures like dragons in Europe. On the contrary, they are imagined as wise gods or helpful spirits. However, over time, these narratives mixed together and a situation emerged as if there was a single dragon perception in all societies. This is not true. So, why do you think dragons appear in roughly similar forms in different cultures, even though they do not have the same character and appearance? Because our fears are common. We may have become accustomed to the comfort of the cities we live in, but these concrete blocks that protect us from the dangers of the outside world did not always exist. If we are looking for the source of our basic instincts, we need to go back long before cities, to the times when we struggled to survive in the wild. When we do this, everything becomes much more understandable. Dragons are just an amalgamation of all of man's evolutionary fears. First of all, living snakes are what the things we call dragons are based on. We can see this both in the directly snake-like bodies of proto-draconian creatures and in the reptilian bodies of modern dragon figures. In fact, the word dragon comes from the Greek drakon, meaning reptile. This makes sense because in the wild, snakes are among the predators most feared by our ancestors and many other prey animals. Snake phobia is one of the most common phobias in humans. Even 40% of people born and raised in cities who have never seen a snake in their lives have a fear of snakes. Because thanks to the phenomenon called the Baldwin effect, behaviors that affect the survival chances of species can become permanent in the species through the selection of genes. Therefore, phobias or behavioral patterns that increase the chances of survival can be found in the offspring of the species from the moment of birth.
Other creatures that make up dragons' bodies are crocodiles, giant cats, and birds of prey, such as eagles. All of these are among the deadly dangers to humans, and especially their young in the wild. It is no coincidence that dragons live in dark caves, deep pools, inaccessible mountaintops, or cursed forests. These are places where people's deepest fears come true. It is no coincidence that dragons are so similar to dinosaurs. Although it became official in the 19th century that these giant bones, which disappeared millions of years ago, belong to animals called dinosaurs, people have come across the huge bones of these large animals for thousands of years. Fossil beds in the foothills of the Himalayas, or gigantic dinosaur footprints on the plains of America, have captured the imagination of our species for thousands of years. Dinosaur fossils must have inspired our mythological accounts of gigantic reptiles. Likewise, fearsome creatures that we can see with our own eyes even today, such as Komodo dragons, Gila monsters, iguanas, and crocodiles, also shaped ancient dragon images. However, dragons have one feature that captured our imagination, breathing fire. Because fire is so destructive and spreading, it is not easy to coexist with biological organisms. However, some creatures in nature use fire in some way. For example, some plants reproduce thanks to fires, or some birds deliberately start fires and hunt rabbits or insects that run away from the fire in fear. Insects of the Melanophila acuminata type prefer to be attracted to fire areas and lay their eggs in still burning wood. Pyrophilus fungi shed their spores immediately after forest fires. But none of these are comparable to breathing fire from the mouths of dragons. In order for dragons to breathe fire, it is necessary to push the limits of biology by using some facts we know from chemistry. Fire requires oxygen, sparks, and fuel. Oxygen is not a problem since it is already abundant in the atmosphere. Spark is a little more difficult, but not impossible. It is not a coincidence that dragons are associated with iron and steel. In ancient times, when fire and power were mentioned, the first thing that came to mind was swords. Therefore, we can expect iron-infused dragons to have more iron in their bodies than other creatures. Considering that birds accumulate small stones in their stony areas and digest them by compressing them with strong muscles, dragons can create sparks in a similar way with the muscles and stones in their throats. When these sparks combine with a flammable liquid produced and stored in the dragon's body, it may be possible for flames to appear. As for what this flammable liquid might be, examples are found in nature. For example, some insects and fish can produce bioluminescent liquids, while some insects, such as the bombardier bug, can spray high temperature liquids through chemical reactions. If a flammable liquid like hydrocarbon can be produced in the body of dragons, and this liquid is ignited by sparks created in the throat, it becomes biologically possible for dragons to breathe fire. In conclusion, although dragons' ability to breathe fire requires pushing biological limits and using our current knowledge of chemistry, it is not completely impossible. However, it is highly unlikely that such a mechanism will arise evolutionarily. Dragons will continue to live in our imagination as mythological and fantastic creatures. Even though they do not exist in reality, their stories have left and will continue to leave deep traces in human culture and art. So, even if dragons don't actually exist, they continue to show us how inspiring pushing the boundaries of nature and science can be.